Hey guys, this is Keith from Keith Goes Racing and uh, just wanted to kind of go over the first autocross of the season, um, kind of how I was interpreting the track and trying to run it and show uh, a couple runs uh, of some good things and, and some bad things. So uh, we'll just jump right into it. So this is kind of at the start of the course. This is my fifth run, I believe, uh, of seven at this point. So I already kind of know the track pretty well. Um, so we have the start here, and we could see it's a left-hander followed by uh, a right-hander. You could kind of see that. Um, so I'll just kind of draw it here if I can. So it's kind of going like this, and then kind of like that. Um, so one thing with this, uh, kind of like on the start where my, my focus is, is I'm really looking at this cone right here and the reason I'm looking at that one is because we're gonna start we're gonna make the left hander around this cone we're gonna make the right hander around that cone but if we take that one too tight and we get on the gas we're gonna swing out and hit that cone and there's a little bit of a straightaway and then kind of like a half Chicago box uh, which is kind of like down over here so basically we want to start and take this first turn kind of wide so Kind of be out here, swoop in, and then try to kind of swoop in again or make a late turn or a, a late apex so we don't hit that outside cone. So we'll kind of see how that goes here. Let's kind of erase these marks. All right. Okay. Um, so now we can see that this this cone on the left side, that, that's what's really locking us in. And so we can't swoop out too much. Uh, but now we have a pretty nice um, straightaway that is kind of linking these up. So we're going to put our left wheel here. And there's, like I said, this kind of like, it's a right-hander, but it almost looks like kind of a half Chicago box. And looking at this, it, it kind of, invites you to come like this and then make a sharp right turn uh, but instead what we can do is since that there's since there's no outside cones here um, so so there's this one here but there's not more so what this means is we can take this cone and go out a little bit and then swoop in and almost make this kind of a very light right hander rather than the 90 degree turn that it it looks like it's going to be so we'll kind of flow through this and I'm sorry there's not an easy way oh is there a way to just clear everything ho oh, ho amazing okay uh, I'm also sorry if it's jerky it seems like it's a little bit herky jerky to me but this is more explanation than it is a smooth run you could look at one of the other videos I posted where it's like the smooth run of this all right so now you could see kind of what's going on here so if we were more to the right this would be a very sharp right hand turn but since we're off to the left a little bit kind of aiming uh, at this first left cone, we're going to try and put the left wheels kind of like this. And you could hear, like, I got off the gas, of course, um, but I didn't break into it and make a hard right turn. Now, this is what I think is the more tricky part, uh, tricky corner, is we have this right hander into this, followed by a left hander followed by these two double cones. And when you can't tell from here is these are actually kind of set in this way. So if we take this really tight and we swing out that way, we're going to have a hard time making it in. And then it's basically a slalom. We're going to have to cut right back. So we're going to get the car really out of whack. So really what the plan here is, is to take the car back out, swoop in like this, and get the car nice and kind of flat through here and then this is going to be more of an angle than it is going to be you know an S like that so let's keep it going so we could see the car is kind of like you know this right now and that's fine because I was aiming for this to try to make this turn nice and wide so I can kind of swoop across and so now you could see if we carry too much speed and we we're out here it would be really hard to make this thing. 
Uh, but now what we're going to do is hopefully get the car kind of straight right here, put the right tires on that cone, and just kind of cut through. And now you can hear, rather than having to correct and do anything, it's pretty much just full acceleration on here. And actually, up to this point, I've been in first gear. So I'm going to shift uh, right here to second for the, for the first time. Okay, so now the we have the uh, uh, we have a 180 degree turnaround. So the initial way that I was taking this was being on the outside, and then envisioning two car widths at this cone, and and trying to maintain that all the way around this curve. And the reason I was doing that was for speed maintenance. And uh, we'll do a split screen in a minute to kind of compare like what the difference of that was. Um, but just know that's kind of what I'm intending to do on this run. So now we have the, the middle cone, and again, I'm trying to picture two car widths right here and put myself on the outside of that. And the reason for that is that this final cone, by being out here, I want to finally swoop in. And I want to almost come straight past this one rather than still turning past this one. So that's the intention, to just carry a little bit more momentum. And we could see at this cone, you know, our left wheel is, is basically on it right now. And rather than kind of our momentum carrying out this way, we're almost, we're about to be sh kind of flat and be able to go straight through this. And then this is a, a pretty uh, fast but slowing down section. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a second here. All right, so we get the car flat, full throttle playing with the throttle we uh, get to this first actually let me step back a beat here uh, let's see, come around okay so we are coming through here and basically we're gonna go straight through this we're gonna try to not carry it too far to the outside because we have to make it to the right side of this uh, triple cone and then there's a almost like a slum we're gonna have to come to the other side of that that uh, next triple cone setup so we want to be careful to not carry too much speed um, out of this. And so here we're kind of lined straight up for this kind of initial slalom. Uh, but then there's going to be another triple cone we have to get around. And there's a single cone out there somewhere that we'll, we'll see in a moment. All right, so now that first kind of you know, uh, right left is a little bit deceiving because now we have to really come to the right and then there's going to be a single cone over here and we really have to come to the left after that. So I'm kind of just feathering the throttle. I'm just trying to maintain momentum here more so than trying to accelerate through each of these. And maybe that was a little bit conservative, but um, I didn't want to have to plow the brakes and get too out of sorts here. Okay, so now we've come around that one and that single cone kind of lives out here. So want to try to get out and kind of backside this or, or late apex it to kind of set up for that one a little bit better. All right, so now you can see how far over this single uh, cone is. And then we're going to go this way. And then basically there's a big kind of 180 almost. And you can kind of see on the map up here what's going on. Oops. Okay, so we have this single cone. And the idea here the first few times um, was that there's a wall of cones out here. I wanted to take it to that wall so I can maintain momentum. And what you'll see is that even though this is kind of a big hairpin, the real sharp turn doesn't come until a very tight section over here. So it's almost like even though this whole thing is like a U, it's kind of almost like this. If, if we were to imagine this being like the roadway. And so my interpretation of this was to enter, um, it's gonna be hard to draw, enter kind of like a soft turn and then make a V right here and then start to accelerate out. So here we're getting uh, to that wall of cones you could start to see, you know, it's this right-handing sweeping turn. 
here up to the wall of cones. And really, uh, you can't quite see it yet. Let me go a little bit more. Okay. So this is basically the wall or the, or the line of the turn. So ideally, at this point, hopefully I've carried enough momentum, I can just let go of the gas. And I probably could have done it better uh, in this run, but kind of put the right wheels on this cone and then put the right wheels on that cone. And instead what I'm gonna do, I think what I'm gonna do here is come out a little bit and then come back in. So I'm increasing the length of the straightaway a tiny bit, They will get on the throttle a little bit sooner. Um, but it's probably not worth the distance I'm losing. So you can see kind of a wide entry here. And the reason I'm doing a wide entry is we could see that you still have to kind of, you know, stay within this boundary. And then we're going to have a slalom coming up here, and it's a right entry slalom. So we need to wrap this one as really as tight as possible. All right, so here we have the slalom. Um, three cones slalom followed by a left hander. So we're already kind of set up to enter the right. We're going to go like this, like this, uh, and then it's going to be uh, a left hander. Nothing really fancy here, just get through the slalom. Okay, so far so good. Didn't hit that cone unbelievably. Or that one. Alright, so now we have a pretty decent, you know, left hander with some outside wall cones here so we have to kind of monitor how far to left we're going to do this one this is where i wanted to give up a little bit of speed because there's a pretty good acceleration area through here followed by kind of a tricky right and left okay so we're taking this tight and now we have this double cone another double cone and then a right hander or actually that double cone I first circled might be the right hander. So we're gonna hug uh, this first double cone. Okay. Now, <clears throat> looking at this, I think it's, it, let, me, let me actually move it a little bit more forward. Okay. So we have here to here to a left hander here. And the way that I was interpreting this was that um, this should line up with this. So this is basically my my entry into this area. And what I want to do is take the start of this turn deep and then make the right hander here to keep myself on this outside so I can wrap around this one faster. I think it's a bit of a trick, a visual trick, that's making you want to go past this cone, go fast into this, there's only three wall cones, so it would make you want to carry that way out, but then you're going to have to correct heavily and then make this left again. So I wanted to kind of get ahead of the whole, the whole uh, chain of turns here. So keep it out. I didn't go. I didn't dive in for this cone immediately. I just kind of kept it out here for a while, and then turning in later to set myself up for the upcoming left-hander. So turning in. Keep turning in deep. And basically just kind of setting myself up to the outside of this one so I can swoop in. Uh, there's going to be a gate out here, but we're going to make that pretty easily. So we're coming in, left around that. Now as I was looking at this one, I was kind of paying attention to this cone. And to the left of it, this basically enters a slalom. So if I would have ran from this cone to this cone, it would have pushed me to the outside over here and I would have to really struggle to make this whole upcoming slalom. Really my plan of attack was to keep my right wheel on this cone, carry out a little bit and then come and attack this whole thing straight rather than cutting the corner. So you can see I, I almost did this little like kind of, you can tell the car bobbles a little bit actually. Um, Oh, that's interesting too. It looks like that cone is is out of its box. If I would have noticed that in real time, I could have stopped and pointed and got yet another rerun. But uh, anywho, uh, just kind of notice like the car looks like it it flattens out for a, for a split second, and and that's me on this curve and then going straight and then turning in. And it's just to get the car settled uh, to go into the the upcoming slump. Saw that little bobble right there. All right, so now 
left wheels on this, we go around this. There's going to be another double cone out here, but really we can ignore that, cut through, and just run this way. So here we go. Got the double cone around it. This cone is in this invites you to want to come out there, but we're just going to completely disregard that one. And we're going to make a left and attack uh, the, the next corner. So here we ignore it. And we have a right hander, so the right hand cone is here. We can see a wall starting here. This wall basically runs like that. And we're going to make a 180 degree and then go through the finish line, which is kind of right over here. We'll see in a second. Now, a consistent problem I've been having with the Camaro is, is really bad brake fade. So what's going to end up happening here is I'm going to hit the brake probably about here and nothing is going to happen if you watch the speedometer. It's going to like trickle down and then I'm going to start to turn the wheel even though my brakes aren't working and then all of a sudden they're going to catch but it's going to take me all the way to this outside wall and just really ruin my line. So here you can see it's just it, it the, for some reason the brake started activating once um, I started to turn but I'm going way further out than I need it to be. And so now that I'm flat, I'm not carrying a good arc. So basically I'm having to make two turns now instead of just one nice consistent turn. Cutting down on the cone, we could see the finish. And so um, whenever you're heading toward, uh, in my opinion at least, whenever you're heading toward the finish line, you kind of want to just key in on these cones here and put your left wheel like basically right up against it, which means whatever turn you're coming out of, you're just carrying a really nice wide arc and being able to do a lot of speed. There's no sense in trying to make a really sharp turn and go here right now. And that could save you a tenth of a second. And that's that. So ignore this time up here. Um, that run was actually a... Give me one moment to pull it up. that was a 62.143 so up to that point this was my my best run um, and so now we'll take a look at the next one all right let's pause this Got the right one up, yes. Okay, very good. Let me just close these others to save on resource. Okay, so this will be the uh, you know exact same plan. Um, and I would consider the driving line I'm trying to do here very loopy, um, just keeping a lot of space. Normally I don't do these momentum type runs, um, but since there was no one else in F class today, I was just very curious to, to give it a shot to see what it would be like. Um, so by just know this, this isn't maybe the right way. I, I think distance, uh, shaving distance is always most important, but I just wanted to try something new and, and I thought today was a good day to try. And it was the first autocross, so, you know, whatever, but same, same ideas here. So there we go tight on that cone, keeping our eye on, um, where, what happened to my little pen tool. There we go. Um, so again, our, our focus is on that cone. That's the most important one that we have to kind of make it inside of. Recorder started. I'm going to put it to the outside here. Again, here comes that box. The uh, wall cones, so we're going to put our left tire here, here, come out, and then slice across this thing up ahead. Oops. Didn't mean that. All right. Okay. So we're trying to keep some speed through here. Again, get back to the right as soon as possible to make this less of a sharp turn. A lot of the guys that were running really good times and, and more 
pro guys were taking this turn extremely tight. Um, these were in like Miatas and Porsches and um, uh, something else I can't think of. Some other really good um, auto crossing car. I just don't think I could do it in the Camaro without uh, just scrubbing a lot of speed. So I have to do a little bit more momentum management and and almost tire management to not overheat them or, or be scrubbing them. So I, this is probably isn't the perfect line. And, and if you're really good at autocrossing, I don't know why you're watching this, but um, I understand that y you may look at that and go, oh, I'm going to take that super tight. It's just not possible. I, I don't think at least in this car or my skill set doesn't allow for it. So here, um, took this one really nice because we're going to have the car nice and flat well before this this uh, upcoming slalom just f basically full on a little bit of a lift to just get through it okay um, right here we do our shift and then I'm gonna take this one different this time uh, rather than as I described keeping my two car length width I'm gonna dive on this one and then kind of go to the outside of the the middle cone that's gonna be here and then come back down to the inside a little bit of space tighten it back up here and now we can see that we're gonna have the car nice and flat and kind of shooting for going through this and then realizing we have our slalom coming up oh, why do I keep clicking save sorry okay all right so here we have our kind of slalom lined up in front of us but we know it's gonna offset uh, to the right eventually again just keeping consistent speed uh, and consistent throttle through this rather than trying to herk and jerk the throttle through each of these. It probably would have got me a little bit more time, perhaps, to like stab the throttle, stab the brake, stab the throttle, stab the brake, but I just wanted to keep the car under me and, and, and just run good. All right, so now it's, a, it's that kind of sharp turn. So I slowed down a little bit at this cone, the set of cones we just passed in order to get the car over quicker because uh, I'm not so concerned about how I take this one. I'm more concerned about the setup for that up upcoming single cone. So I thought if I can get a little bit more to the outside here and wrap this one better, it'll set me up better for the, um, uh, the upcoming turn. I'm just clicking every button I don't need to be clicking right now. Sorry. Okay, here we go. All right. And I felt this was a lot better. Like. The car felt much more in control, and I'm going to get it flat before this, and it allowed me to do something a little bit different. It allowed me to take this um, whole turn now, rather than all the way out to that wall. I'm going to hug this one a little bit more, and then hug this one, and hug the next one, and then kind of make a, a V turn at the end of this. Uh, so it just felt like a, a better line overall. All right, so we could see down on this one. A little bit lower trying to stay down in this double cone and then we're gonna finally float it up a little bit get room so we can make uh, kind of a V turn here and again still wanting in my opinion at least still wanting to take this one wide because we have a slalom coming up that we have to do a right hand entry so carrying too much speed on this would just carry us out on the wrong side of the slalom so I thought it was just a better line to come out here all right, so we're going to be really tight on this one, but here we're, we're pretty level um, coming out of it, and we're about to get the car pointed to that. So we're not like out of control, max speed over here, tires chattering. I feel like it's very in control for this upcoming slalom. All right, so we're through that, and now we're going to make our left-hander. Uh, we're moving at a pretty good clip. Again, going to try and take this tight. Um, all right, we could stay on the right side of, of this, so we're just going to try to kind of come down uh, on it with the left wheels. Here we go. Uh, just going to kind of go straight through this and not get suckered to come down into this too early, so this way we can uh, make this turn correctly. See, really wide off those two cones we just passed, probably a car width off and kind of almost against the, the line out here. All right, so we're coming into it, coming, again, the line to go right now is like this, but you can still see I'm still turning to kind of do one of these numbers. 
and again, maybe this is too much. It might just be adding too much distance into my run. Um, but I'm just trying to keep some momentum and trying not to get into places where I have to really break hard or, or get the car um, out of balance. So tight down on this. Already I was looking at this cone uh, with the idea of getting my right wheel out onto it. You can see here, did a little bit of a straighten out in, in that gate rather than after that gate. So I kind of think this one I took a little bit too tight, but whatever. So we come around it, come around this one. All right, so we're gonna ignore that and we're just gonna wrap around this. And then this is the area that I'm having the braking issues in. So what I decided to do this time was not get too heavily on it, brake a little bit earlier with a little bit less brake pressure and then try to put the right wheel on that cone connect it to the other cone and then just come in through the finish which actually worked really well so here just aggressive braking right wheel on the right cone right cone accelerate out to the left cone this run uh let me pull it up was a 60.572 so that was not quite two seconds faster but uh almost what 1.6 seconds faster so I don't know what the difference was, honestly, between these two. And interestingly enough, um, we could do a split screen of it. Give me one moment here. Let's do this and then pause it. And where do I do it here? Yep. All right. Am I showing the right thing? Okay, cool. So the top one is the fast run and the bottom one is the slow run or um, the bottom one is the first one we looked at and the top one is the fast one. And we get the start. Um, both basically doing the same thing here. Again, the same thing here. So uh, the green one, the bottom one, got a little bit better of a jump on this one. I, I think I started more aggressively on the green run versus the red run. Okay, at this point, green is a little bit ahead by maybe a car length or two, uh, but not going as fast. So this shows that distance, and we could tell here, we could show that the distance uh, of kind of cutting through is a little bit better and red is behind. Come through this, red's a little bit faster. About to do our entry. Coming through here, about equal. You can see here, um, I might have spun the tires in the green run, which is why the RPM went so high. Or I missed my shift. I think I missed my shift, uh, my shift on that run, actually, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that might be it, anyway. Uh, but speed's pretty equivalent. Again, two mile an hour difference. Braking. So, interestingly, you know, even with uh, red holding a tighter line and the green run doing a looser line, um, speeds are about the same. And, and this is why I think in autocross, much like go-karting, the speed you maintain I don't know. I, I don't know if it makes up for the distance that you save. It, it doesn't seem to. I find when I run just much tighter lines, I'm faster, but I don't know if that's because I'm more guided on where to go or kind of what the situation is. But anyway. All right, so here we are on exit. At this point, uh, red is a little bit ahead. Um, also running a faster speed right now. Okay, we're about to enter the, the uh, triple cone. So here we can see green is faster uh, back here right now, uh, but also more throttle in. And now we could see just kind of coming through here, speeds have been matched up. Okay, we're gonna enter this. Getting to this cone, about the same speed. So green should be going a little bit wider here than uh, the red run. 
and that makes I was going to say that makes sense based on the speed. I think since green has been hugging the out or the green run I've been hugging the outside run here. I've been having to like stay off the throttle whereas red was on the inside now is now we can gun out to the outside. So I think that's making up for the mile basically insignificant speed difference. All right, so we wrap around here again, same speed and everything. Come into the slalom, same same and this is the thing too i was like how you know why am i running such bad times and and i thought i was doing the whole course wrong but here a really good run versus a, a run that's two seconds almost two seconds slower so far i would argue neck and neck and we I, the timing isn't very accurate to use i don't think uh in in solo storm because i think the gps drifts or whatnot but overall i mean it's basically looking like the same run Come through here, same speed, same everything. Kind of the outside here coming in. Trying to widen it out, same speed. Uh, per the timing here, about a tenth of a second difference. Carrying it to the outside. So this red run is a couple miles an hour faster here. and you know, kind of significant now. Um, so maybe just the way I took that one, maybe my entry into that left-hander turn was, a, I think, a little bit better. Um, and so I, I might be carrying just more speed. And you can see it's been pretty consistent so far. Going through these cones. Coming around. Now kind of both on the brakes. And let's see if there's a, a speed difference here. So here you could see in the run where the brakes just were fading and not working. As I'm going into the turn with on the, in the red run, I'm already down at 35 miles an hour. Or in the green run, I'm cutting down and I'm at 40. And so here now red... Uh, Green is is trying to turn and scrub. Uh, I'm trying to do that on that run. Run red. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Well, now I could get back into it. So again, a lot of speed scrubbing in the green run. Although I saw it blink to 28 miles an hour for a second as I'm trying to correct the car and get it back under me. Meanwhile, the red run is a consistent 35 exit speed. Um, it's the same, but but I think red is further ahead at this point perhaps and also with red I was kind of carrying it to the outside I guess in a way that solo is solo storm is is interpreting this it's putting it ahead and there's you know only a 0.6 difference so again it's not I don't know how to exactly lay it on but um, here we are kind of across the line let's see where that was All right, so kind of here at the line for green, which is the slower run. So I don't know why it's putting it ahead of it, but whatever. Uh, we're at about 45. And then as red is going through about 49, let's call it. I think that's about right. Uh, so anyway, that's just uh, a kind of a quick, you know, run through of a few different runs, comparing a good run to a way better run. Um, I just find it so surprising that um, that U-turn and, and the brakes going away can cause such a dramatic difference in time, like almost almost a two second difference. And I think that's where it happened. Like I really can't tell anywhere else where I was dramatically better. Um, but anyway, I hope this is, this is helpful. It's already been 30 minutes, so I don't want to keep yammering on. But if this was helpful or you have any questions, uh, you know, drop a question in the comments. I'll, I'll try to respond to it. Um, I have a Discord channel if you want to leave questions in there, and there's other videos if you want to take a look that um, kind of show some other runs. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful, and uh, take care.